Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Markup Monday, the international lesson edition. The final of this quarter. We're getting ready for this Sunday, which is September the 28th. Is that right? That's right. September 28th. No, it's August. August 28th. I'm into September. I'm already calendar planning, Israel planning, the whole night. So y'all forgive me. I've been in September and doing some other calendar. But August 28th, the last Sunday in this Sunday school quarter. So congratulations. You've made it to the end of the school year. And like uh, the young people, we are back to school, back to Sunday school. So I'm excited to share new things that will come into this community um, I'll be sharing what you can expect going forward in this community. And I'm also open. So if there are things that you would like me to consider, I can't promise you things, but if there are things that you would like me to consider or things that would honestly be helpful to you as a student, as you are studying, or even if you're a teacher or a superintendent, if there are things that will be helpful to you, you can email me. I read my emails. I may not be great on my YouTube comments, but I read and respond to my own emails. So please let me know um, as we are praying and considering. And thank you all so much for being here and on time tonight. Sister Vivian Applewhite, you were early at 6.30. I saw your comment. I was like, yes. But I'm so glad that you're here tonight. Um, let us uh, let me share a couple of things and then I'll pray and we will get into the lesson. By the way, if you're a first timer, welcome to Markup Monday. And we're not here tonight to study the lesson in its entirety. What we are going to do is I have a blank uh, template that I've done for myself. So I have not read ahead. And we're going to look at what do we see? What do we think? What does this remind us of? How does it make us feel? And it's called Markup Monday because by, by the time I get to the end, even though this is blank right now, it'll be marked up at the end with just my own chicken scratch. And only I have to understand it because this becomes my personal template that I will use for the balance of the week to help me um, finalize or get ready for my lesson. So this is what I'll use to guide my study. All right, before I actually get into the lesson for today, there is one thing I want to invite you to remind you about. On this Saturday, this Saturday, August 27th at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, I want you to join me here on YouTube because I want to say thank you to the incredible teaching team that has helped us to win and succeed in this Sunday school year. It was um, August 24th of last year when I went live and I shared with you that there was a departure from the international standard lesson uh, with the Church of God in Christ. And I was saying, I watched it this week, and I was saying, I don't know what will happen, and I can't make you any promises, and I don't know what it's like to try to prepare double lessons and double kid packs and double markup Mondays. And I said, and I don't know, and then I made a video that said, I'm leaving Kojic, uh, and that caused great alarm to other people. But what I did was I was just prayerful about it, and God literally allowed people to surface, and they said, I will help, I will help. And before I knew it, there was a wonderful group of people who were there and literally have hung in here with us the entire year. I appreciate all of them. So I want you to be present. And on this Saturday, we're going to have a chance to thank them. I've had a couple of you to reach out, being interested in actually coming on live to talk with them. And I still have a couple of slots where I can welcome those of you in the learning community who have benefited who just want to say thank you or speak life back into these individuals. It's going to be a fun time. But again, I want us to pour back into them just as they have shared with us. I will also welcome you to share a gift with them. And I'm going to have you send it by Cash App or Givelify to that Sunday school girl. And I will divide and share it equitably among the teaching team. So I want to think about all of that and making sure that everyone is appreciated. So I want to thank um, several people who have already shared gifts. Uh, Dr. Bonnie, Bonnie Perry Adams uh, was the very first one to say, I can't be there Saturday, but I love this team. And she's already sent a kind gift of $100. So whatever it is you can do, if you'll consider sharing with this team, I would appreciate it. I want to celebrate them. So let's go ahead and let's pray. And we will get into our read for tonight. Father, we bless you. 
We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise for this another week that you've allowed us to enter into. Thank you for your spirit that is present with us and that guides us. And thank you so much, God, that your desire is for good things for us. And thank you that you desire to be present with us and to help us through life circumstances. God, so many of us are going through so many different things, but I thank you that you give us community that surrounds us and reminds us of your word. And thank you that you give us your word to build us up. Now, Father, be with us as we go into this reading tonight. Open up our minds, our hearts, our understanding. Never let us get bored or tired with your word, but always open up a fresh perspective to us. But more than anything, challenge us to not just be hearers of your word or people who memorize your word, but literally take this ability to bring your word into our spaces and cause it to come alive and live in us. Bless every person who's present now and even those who will catch the replay. We love you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go. We are in Revelation chapter 22, verses 8 through 21. This again is our last lesson in our commentaries. You'll be able to retire this commentary. And we have had a beautiful four weeks in Revelation. Uh, again, I want you to see that I've started with a blank. So that means that we're doing this together on tonight. So I'll be listening, and, I'm sorry, looking for you as you're listening to me and we're going to share this together. Thank you so much, Mr. Antoinette. Your alternate title is a welcoming invitation. Okay. And our memory verses are verses 18 and 19. 18 and 19, I had a typo on my form. All right, our lesson aims are that we're gonna survey the biblical references to the second coming in order to see the importance of this hope for reality. Rejoice at the invitation from Jesus, from Jesus to be part of the new creation continues through the end of all things and embrace the call to become part of God's kingdom. So just looking at, you can give me any feedback that you have on the lesson aim. Um, there are a couple of words that I'm going to just circle in here. And by the way, when I do a markup document tonight, I have I have four colors of pens. I'm not doing anything fancy or special. I'm a visual learner. I like colored pens and markers and highlighters. So tonight, these are the four I have. The colors don't mean, look at that. I didn't realize I was matching. Wait a minute. Ah, that wasn't even on purpose. But the colors don't overly mean anything. They mean whatever I decide that they mean as I decide to, to go through the passage. So don't get lost on any colors that you may see. But the couple of words that I'm just going to highlight here are hoped for reality and um, embracing. And the reason that those words are standing out, I see you, Sister Dorothy. The reason those words stand out for me is one of the things that I've been asking my class about, and by the way, I teach young adults, um, is I, we've been talking about, this is all about heaven, right? And this vision that John has seen that the angel shows him about what the end of time will be like. And I asked them, where is heaven? And what do you believe heaven looks like? I know what Kirk Franklin is singing. I think the song is wonderful. I like gigging. But what do you think about with heaven? And not only what do you think about, but I want to know, like, do you like live for it? Um, and I was explaining to them that I remember growing up that my grandparents and my great grandparents, like they talked about heaven. But do we now in this space really look at it with the words that are given in this lesson aim, which is a hope for reality? Like, do we hope for, do we honestly and earnestly think about heaven? So that's why I wanted to underline that word there. All right. And thank you so much. Uh, please remember to click that thumbs up like button and please remember to share. This is back to school season and we need to get some folks back to Sunday school. So this is a great way to get people back to Sunday school. All right. Let's go ahead. And what we're going to do, if you're a first timer, drop that in the comments. We want to say welcome to you. Make sure you click the subscribe button, your family now, but say hello in the comments and watch this love that's going to get around you. All right, we're going to go in short tidbits and you're going to tell me what you see, think about, remind you of, what are you making connections to? I'm going to read verses eight and nine. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, see thou do, do it not. 
I am a fellow, I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren, the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. Let me keep reading. I haven't read it all. And he said unto me, seal not the sayings of this prophecy of this book for the time is at hand and he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whoever whosoever loveth and make it a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly, amen. Even so, Lord Jesus, e even so come Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That was the entire reading and we should have plenty of background. Let me slow down. Normally we start with background, but this is week number four. So you know your background. You know that this is John. This is the last book in uh, the last chapter in the book of Revelation. We know that from yesterday's lesson. This is the final portion. We stopped yesterday at verse seven. Today we pick up at 21 and we continue on. So as we go here, um, even looking at the title, the two titles that we have, uh, let me do a quick reflection and you can tell me what you think on the titles. One is come and enjoy. The other is a welcoming invitation. So the first connection that I make is nobody is beating you over the head to accept this. Nobody is going to beat you down and say, you gotta go to heaven. I love the idea because an invitation has the ability to be accepted or to decline. When you think about any invitation you send out for an event, people either accept or they will send their regrets. So yes, Sister Joanne, this book is, an op is open and the choice is yours. You can read it and accept it, believe it, or you can read it and deny it, but the book is open. God is not keeping anything on the down low and it is not a secret. Yes, Pastor Sandra, this is a choice, Sister Joanne. It is not concealed. Sister Antoinette, submit your RSVP ASAP. Absolutely. So we have a choice in the matter. And I think that that is beautiful. Like God honors choice. So never mind. I was about to start teaching. That's not what we're doing tonight. He honors our choices. And I believe that. Um, I've been having a lot of conversations about choices, right? And that's what life is. The choice is heaven or hell. When we're making our choices every day, we make choices in light of what we believe about what we read in passages like this. All right, verses eight and nine. Our forefathers, Sister Prelo says, stood in fear of reading Revelation. Word, the word should open your eyes. The word should, yes, it should open our eyes and our understanding and it should inform the ways that we behave. When your eyes are open and your understanding is enlightened, it should inform the ways that you behave. I believe that. Verses eight and nine. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, see thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren of the brethren, the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. All right. No, brother Aaron, I am not going to go ahead and do it so that y'all can have ice cream tonight. Nope, not going to do it. 
What do you see in verses eight and nine? What is jumping out at you at verses eight and nine? And I'm watching tonight. I'm using StreamYard. So I know that you all are just a few seconds behind me. So I'm going to pause and give this just a little bit of time here while I'm watching. All right. Let's see what you're saying. Yes. John Fitness and More was selected to see this. He identifies himself. So when we looked at like who was the author of this book, how did we know that John was the author? I think in my my notes yesterday, I, I mentioned that four times he identifies that it's me, John. So uh, we have the identification that it's John who was given insight. And what does this make me think about? It takes me back to the very, like back to my background statements that John who was banished to the Isle of Patmos, who was like sent away so that he wouldn't be by people so that he couldn't preach. Like God honored him by choosing him to show him this vision. And I mentioned that in yesterday's lesson with my class that that seems like that's a huge thing to me that God chose him for this kind of very special assignment. He's the only disciple not to die from murder, I believe. Brother Aaron, thank you for that interesting tidbit. Um... Uh, yes, remember to view what John saw and heard. Fitness and More wants to know why. Out of all the people in all the world that God could have chosen, why would he have chosen John? I like that reflection there. Uh, Sister Crystal says that John has experienced a reality. He's seeing and hearing, and he gets corrected again. Absolutely. Uh, you have been, okay, I'm back, I'm back in the invitation pieces. Um, John is corrected for the second time, Sister Crystal. Thank you for that. And you'll want to figure out when was the first time he was corrected, all right? So here I'm going to call this a response. John says that I saw these things and I heard them. Remember, Revelation is a sensory book. There's a lot going on. I described it like a movie scene. Oh, my goodness. Now the angel shows me this. Now the angel shows me that. He's saying that I've seen and I heard these things. And when I did this, there was a reaction. I'm going to identify a reaction here. His reaction was that he did two things. I fell down and I worshiped. And he was offering, the angel was the object of his worship. This automatically tells me that I need to think about, mm, how do I want to say this? The thoughtfulness that we put into where we direct our worship. Uh-huh. This I'm a little quieter when I have to write and talk because that's that whole like patting your stomach and patting your head and rubbing your stomach. I can't talk in tight. I can't write in tight. Okay. But y'all like it when I do it this way. So here we go. But the direction of his worship, the first time fitness and more, the correction is in the first time is in Daniel is what fitness and more says. Uh, yes. Reacts to his experiences to crystal. And I guess when I think about this, like there are some things that happen and they are so overwhelming. Like what? why? Like, what was it about this that, because John could have done a whole lot of things. I probably would have been in the corner, like shaking from the stuff I'd seen, but that wasn't his reaction. Like, I find his reaction pretty curious that, that what he saw, not, to me, this has all been, that when people think about Revelation, it's overwhelming for, at least for me, it's a lot to read. It's not scary to me, but it's a lot of, when I say overwhelming, I mean like sensory overload to me. So I don't know what my first reaction would have been, but his reaction was to fall down and to worship. He postures himself beneath the angel at the feet of the angel. And it's the angel who showed me these things. What Sister Crystal says and who are we choosing to worship? Absolutely. Yes, Sister Laura, be careful of who you worship and don't get caught up in what you see and hear. Sister Marsha, we are to worship God and not the angels. And that's a great segue because the angel responds to what John does. The angel speaks. His response is spoken. And his response is, hey, hold up, friend. Don't do all that. I, 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 I. That's his response. At, 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 a H T apostrophe, A H T apostrophe. Why did John fall down to worship, knowing that thou shalt worship no other God? Don't know fitness and more. These are great reflection questions. All right. But the angel does not receive that level of worship. He says, Don't do that. I really am putting I, I in my paper. I sure am, because this is my markup document. Don't do that. Why? Because I 
I'm just another servant like you. I'm just like you and, and the prophets. I'm like you. The angel saying, I'm not special. I'm not God. All right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not any of these people. Your worship should be in the last two words. I'm underlining those worship God. All right. Uh, he was in the moment. Sister Faye says, don't worship me. We're supposed to worship God together. Elder Roy. Absolutely. Sister Laura says the angel stayed in his lane and he was only a messenger. You know what? And I think that's important. Sister Laura, see, you're the one teaching on tonight. Because sometimes we have to be careful about accolades and things that come to us and being so careful that no matter what we do or what is accomplished, that we always point the glory back to where the glory is supposed to be. And what this reminds me of is like in these last three, the three lessons prior, like what we see is that everything in heaven has been centered around the throne. So the angel for me is, hey, focus. Let's get back to where, we're, where the focus really is. And the focus belongs on the throne. You have to be careful, uh, Sister Joanne Allen says, not to give man God's credit. Love that. The angel recognizes who he is and his position. Absolutely. Hey, Sister Carolyn, glad you're here. To God be the glory. I'm glad for your input. Uh, God gets the glory. Yes. To God be the glory. Like in, in whatever's going on, whatever's going on in here, whatever experience you've had, however you feel about it, TGBTG. To God be the glory. Thank you, Sister Carolyn. All right. Um, let's go to verses 10 and 11. 10 and 11. I'm moving on. I think we kind of carved the meat off that bone. And he said unto me, seal not the saints of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. All right, let's see what you're saying. The angel, I see a command here. Seal not is an imperative. And when I say an imperative, he is telling John what to do. There's not a survey. Hey, John. You think we should keep this book open or not? I mean, what do you think? I mean, because it's been a whole lot. You think we, no, he's giving him an imperative. Do not seal up the words of this prophecy. Uh, what does that mean to seal up? To me, I just think it means close up to where no one else can access it. I'm going to say close up and restrict access. Oh, I like the way I wrote that. Right. And I don't know who said it earlier that God is not trying to hide the ball from us. Like he's saying to the angel saying, don't seal it up. Don't don't close it off to where no one else can see. You will have to live with your choice or your decision, Sister Joanne. Uh, Sister Joanne also says last week we talked about how quick Jesus will return. Once he returns, you might as well keep what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing because you will not have time to repent. Oh, I had the most beautiful conversation yesterday because the teenagers uh, joined us in our class yesterday. And um, that was when I asked him, what do you think? Behold, I come quickly really means uh, one of the young ladies, one of my high schoolers just said like in the blink of an eye. And that's when I asked him, what do you want to be doing if he comes back in the blink of an eye? Like if you don't have time to get it together. And then I think I scared them because I asked him, do you want to be twerking when he shows up in the blink of an eye? Is that what you want to be doing? You want to be talking? And they were like, oh, lady, why you can't believe you said that? Oh, well, you know, shock factor sometimes. All right. It's all clear. Choose and choose now, Sister Carolyn. Thank you. Don't put the word of God on a shelf. Yeah, or in your house. Uh, it should be on your heart. Uh, they had a choice prior. So he here's another reminder, fitness and more, for us to share the gospel and not keep God's word to ourselves. All right. So I'm going to say not seal up the book. And make sure that you can speak about what prophecy is. I know that we read that and we think we know, but if you're a teacher, never uh, just skim over a word and think that someone knows what that is. But why, what is a prophecy book and why is that kind of book important? And here he's telling us what we should do with it. So when we have this information, how do we as believers handle this responsibly if we have this open book? Uh, why? Because four is a because word. Because the time, and what is the time? The time is when it's all going to happen. I'm going to say even like fulfillment. And I asked my class yesterday, like, do y'all really believe this book? Like, 
Thank you for coming to class today. I had a, I had a full room, but like, do y'all believe this? And if you believe it, again, what you believe informs how you behave. And the time is coming. It's going to be fulfilled. The time is at hand. And yesterday, what this reminds me of, because we're continuing on from yesterday's passage, that the time is not about a schedule or a calendar. It's like the quickness with which he's going to come. The time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. So whoever's doing wrong, whoever's doing, whoever's doing wrong, keep doing that. Whoever's doing, whoever's righteous will still be righteous at that time. So that, I think this is kind of, for me, it's speaking to what will happen in that moment. The time is at hand, that quickness is coming. And I think someone said it earlier, if you've been doing wrong at that point, there's no time to get it right. So I'm going to write down the word urgency. Like verse 11 for me is all about urgency. It also makes me think about like one of the things I was sharing yesterday is like this idea of even consistency in our living because we don't have this time to rush and get it right when he's coming quickly there for me is this sense of urgency to get right and to stay right and to think you know, like consciously every day about how we're living uh pastor sandra says it is true uh to you or do you think it's a fairy tale how you believe is how you behave. That is powerful, absolutely. And Sister Marsha, yes, we have this opportunity to, the vision is not closed off. What's gonna happen is not closed. Sister Crystal says there is no time for last minute repentance, but the time is now. Absolutely, Sister Dawson, want to actively do the work that we have been assigned. Sister Joanne, stop taking for granted that you will have time. Absolutely, you all are saying some great stuff. Please pay attention in the comments. Let me keep moving, it's 727. What am I doing tonight? Haven't much fun. 12 and 13. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be as his work shall be. I am alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Uh, the first thing I see in verse 12 is repetition. Uh, is this repetition from verse seven yesterday or verse six? I think it's verse six yesterday. I'm going off the top of my head. It's either six or seven where Jesus has spoken and said, behold, I come quickly. So that again is an urgency statement for me. And I'm going to circle the word reward. And I know that rewards can be positive or negative. I think everybody is going to get your reward. We have positive rewards and negative rewards. So think about what that means. What does it mean when he says my reward is with me? And if you look I believe in other translations, uh, my is capitalized. So look at who is speaking when they reference my reward. Thank you, Sister Carolyn. Verse seven. So my reward is with me. What kind of reward do you want to receive? Reminds me of the song that we used to sing in my home church. What do you want the Lord to say? Uh huh. What do you want him to say? What do you think your reward will be? He's going to, um, I'm going to say this in my writing here. Like, I feel like rewards are given based on an assessment of performance, right? So right now it's making me think of when I was little, I took piano lessons. I started playing the piano at three and Mrs. Lewis um, had something that she called a goodie box. And on days when I came to my lesson, when it was very clear that I had practiced and that I was prepared for my lesson at the end, I got to go in the goodie box, which was kind of like this white box from Macy's or somewhere. And it just had a little stuff in it. And I got to choose. And that incented me to behave in a certain way. But on days that I didn't perform, it hurt me. She'd say, today you didn't earn the goodie box. So that's what the reward just reminded me of. But every man, and I'm going to underline that every man as his work shall be. So every person, no exemptions. That's what I'm seeing here. Let me see what you're saying. Repetition from last week, Pastor Sandra. Quickly, suddenly, he's coming. Be ready, be ready, be ready. Sister Joanne, why did he say in verse 13? Uh, why did he say verse 13 here in the middle of the passage? Why is this here? Why, why are we getting this reminder again as he's closing out? Like there's this urgency. What determines our future? Uh, what we do now determines our future, Sister Kathy. Absolutely. And only what you do for Christ will last, Sister Laura. But Elder Roy, get right and stay right. If you're not going to get right, get ready for the judgment spoken from this book. Absolutely. And I'm going to come back to these two words, every man and his work. And one thing I keep sharing with folks is we are all going to have to stand and give an account 
for what we did in this uniform. I don't have to answer for anybody else. I have to speak truth, teach truth, teach truth, and live truth. But at the end, I have to give an account for my individual work and everyone has to give an account for their individual work. Yes, Sister Carolyn, my reward is according to my deeds. This is why I tell people, I spend a whole lot of time trying to do what? Mind my business. Cause I'm just trying to keep Lady Way together. Way now, just work on Way now. Just, just try to do right, have a good attitude. My deeds, all right? When you choose to follow Jesus, he will reward you. Verse 13, I am the alpha and omega, the, begin the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Um, for me, this just speaks to sort of, for me, it's like always was and always will be. Um, so that's what I see at the beginning and the end. And maybe there's more for me to carve out. That's all I'm gonna, that's all I put in here for now. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Sister Kathy says there are two groups, those who believe and those who do not, those who believe and do, and those who reject and turn away. So we have a choice as to which group we're going to be in. Let me keep moving verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, they that, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whoever loveth and maketh a lie. Woo. All right. Hold on. Because it's a lot going on in 14 and 15. Uh, blessed are they. Yesterday, verse, verse, sister, sister, sister Carolyn, get me straight. Is it six or seven? where we got a blessed are they yesterday. I don't have my notes from yesterday, but blessed, there was a blessed statement there, which meant happy, kind of like the Beatitudes. Happy are the ones who hear the words of this book and plan to keep what it says. Here's that idea again for me. Happy are they that do, I'm gonna circle the word, do the commandments. Not hear, not rehearse, not quote, but do. That's what I'm writing down. All right, entering through the gate, there is no other way but through the gate and through the gate, which is Jesus Christ. JJ Collier, thank you. Don't forget to like this video. Oh, and thank you. I should have mentioned that in the beginning because I've gotten lots of notes today. I do live in Dallas. I am grateful, no flooding in my immediate area. I'm so grateful. My yard has received what the Lord sent here last night. And I'll, I'll teach about it and preach about it another time. But my grass which looked like it was dead or oh, there was still life underneath. It just needed to be watered. That's not tonight's lesson. Let me come on back here. Blessed are they, they keep his commandments. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sister Carolyn. Thank you, J.M. Jones. And thank you, Sister Dorothy. All right, we are all working on our own soul salvation by doing, Sister Dawson. Absolutely. Many are trying to find the way through others, Sister Joanne. Those that keep his commandments, here's a benefit. And yesterday when I, um, last week when I did my lesson notes, I like structured it as the blessings that we see in this chapter. And I outlined like seven of them. And one of the blessing in verse one was that tree of life. So I'm going to just put a circle because verse chapter eight does have the tree of life. We talked about that in the middle is the river and the tree of life is growing on both sides of the river. Um, so that they're going to have access. I'm going to say the benefit is access to the tree of life. All right and may enter through the gates of the city. This just took me back to something I said three weeks ago when we were talking about the gates and how beautiful they were and they were made of a single pearl. Everybody not coming in. Everybody is not gonna get in. I think you can go back to chapter 28, verse eight, where it gave, like he started talking about who's gonna be able to get in. And here, now I'm gonna write down, it's not for everyone. All right, only those who have a right to access it are gonna get in. Um, those who do not, um, there are some outside. I'm going to say for without is like outside. This is a list for me. Another list of those who are going to be outside the gates. This ain't going to be a who left the gate open. Mm -mm. There are going to be some who are outside the gates. All right. Um, so those who keep his commandments will have an entrance and inference and entrance and an inference only heirs get in pastor sandra payday is coming but look at this list and don't just like roll all over this list like literally look at what each one of those means who are the dogs king james says the dogs what does that mean 
What are sorcerers? Make sure you can explain what these categories of people are. People are whoremongers. Oh, we just calling it all out, right? Murderers, idolaters, and liars. Those who love lies and those who make lies. That's two different kinds of people. I never really thought about people who lo love lies. Ooh, I got to think on that a little bit more. Let me keep moving. Better get lined up. Payday is coming after a while. All that stuff is left outside, Elder Roy. Absolutely. Thank you, Sister Carolyn. We're going to get clarity on who, who left the dogs out. God. That's the answer. They sang a song, right? They said, who let the dogs out? This is who left the dogs out. Who? God. They're not coming in. All right. But let's make sure we know who the dogs are. Let me keep going. Verse 16 in my Bible is titled The Final Invitation. I'm going to write that down here. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take freely of, uh, take of the water of life freely. All right. Speaker here is important for me. Clearly identified. Jesus. So if I'm talking about an invitation, I, I, I asked my class about invitations and how we knew things were reliable yesterday, right? Because uh, we saw that these words of this prophecy are faithful and they're true. Um, but also like when you get invitations, how do you decide whether you're going to accept? And the first answer was it depends on who issued it. So right now I'm thinking about who issued this invitation. I, Jesus, that's a good one. That's a good invitation. All right. No one will be able to say I didn't know or I didn't get the information. Yes. Sister Joanne, Jesus is talking. Sister Crystal. Yes. And he said, I, I love this. Like, I feel right now the love of God when I always say he is not trying to hide the ball. This is not some game of chicken or chance. I sent my angel to tell you what you needed to know. Like I see that. And for me, that is always this reminder that God loves us enough that he is giving us information and chance, right? You have information and this thing that we have called time. I know this is ice cream, but I promise you, it's just, it just is how I feel. The invitation is ours to assess and respond to. And time is that opportunity to conform, to make sure that we qualify for those who have a right to the tree of life. That's how I feel. It's an invitation. And a final warning, Sister Marcy. Remember the song at the gate. Oh, I don't know that was Sister Dawson at the gate. I know I got to find that one. But the final invitation and the warning that I have sent my angel, that's the good stuff. And he says, I am the root of David. And you can look at what all these titles mean. What does that mean that he's the root? A root is where um, something gets like its source of life from. It's kind of like my yard out there. It looked real bad on top. It looked like hay out there, but the roots, the roots got some water, right? So the root is what I think about being the source of like where life is. Um, that offspring of David is important, I believe, prophetically. And the bright and morning star. I never really asked what the bright and the morning star meant, but in the context of reading it now, it is sort of reminding me that there's no more sun. Wasn't that what we read? Because he is the source of light. All right, let's see what else you're saying. Foundation of life. How is the invitation given? <laughs> Decoration, context of the invitation, what's included? Sister Ruthie says, it reminds me of how the children of Israel were given many opportunities to obey God. Oh, I like the psalm list this week, Sister Dorothy. I'm going to have to remember some of these. Thank you. Let me go to 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this, pro of this prophecy, God shall take away part, of the, part out of the book of life. I, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. All right, this here comes the warning part for me. The first part was all warm and fuzzy. That last two verses, that was a warm and fuzzy invitation. That, that really was. That was. All these, like before, does the spirit and the bride are saying, come. There was come one, come two. 
come and drink freely. That was so beautiful. Now we got these who have to receive this warning. Warning. Uh, this is one who hears this book of this prophecy and attempts to manipulate it. That's how I'm going to categorize that. Adding is a manipulation. Taking away is a manipulation. That for me tells me God doesn't need our help. Like whatever's been given here is complete. It's accurate. It doesn't need our human interaction. It's best to tell all the people, tell people, all the people, Sister Joanne, the truth. Absolutely. Pastor Sandra said, we shared this Sunday, God has shown us by foreshadowing everything coming since Genesis. No secrets. You know what's coming. If you do the book, then you get to decide. I love that. Yes, Sister Verlinda, this is a warning that this is not to be offered. I'm not even going to keep going into that. I mean, that's pretty much what it's saying, that this does not need to be altered. Um, and if it is, here is what will happen. God is going to take an action, verse 19. If this happens, then here's what's going to happen. That's what's happening in verse 19, that if you do manipulate the book of this prophecy, then God is going to manipulate your name out of the book. You won't be there. So this, these is, this feels like a very a strong consequence is what I'm going to say. That's a strong consequence because everything and everyone outside of the gate, it's, it's not good. Let's keep going. Verses 20 and 21, and we're at the end. He which testified these things say, saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. All right, last two verses. If anybody was in choir in high school, I'm sorry. Whenever I read these verses, I go back to the song, Even so, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Except it was, Even so, Lord Jesus, quickly come. You know, because you had to sing fancy. I'm sorry. That's how it made me feel. Let me focus. All right. Verses, we're on 20 and 21. He that testifies to these things, I'm going to say witness or affirms. Surely, here's the I come quickly again. This is a repetition for me. Um, I feel like when something is being repeated, like we, we need to get it. Like it's being driven home as a very important point. But the Donald says, again, yeah, the urgency to be ready. Um, and Sister Joanne, yes, teachers and preachers, ministers have to be careful what they teach and preach, right? And I made a post on Saturday night because, whoo, it's just been going off the rails lately. Like, all, this, this document is complete. It doesn't need all this extra creativity. Just stick with the text, preachers. All right. Uh, but yes, and this is a, a benediction. I feel like it's a benediction in verse 21. Uh, there's an amen here. And this feels like a benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that's all I'm going to put there is a benediction. Uh, anything else that you all have? Let me know. There are 119 of you online, 121. I don't know how many of you click the thumbs up like button because tonight I'm on StreamYard. But just make sure you click that thumbs up like button for me. And uh, please do remember that I need you here on Saturday morning. August 27th. We won't be on long, but again, we want to say thank you and show our love to our teaching team and um, just share some time with them and say thank you. Uh, I see your prayer request, fitness, and more, and we will come back and make sure that we honor that. I'll add uh, them to my, is that Kenneth Johnson? I'll add to my personal prayer list. Very, uh, I will do that and pray earnestly. Um, what else do I want you to know? Tonight, after I finish the Kojic lesson, which I'm due on in one minute, I am going to come back on and I'm going to speak very briefly to the new Sunday school quarter and give you some resources and information from this space that I hope will be helpful. Well, let me get over to the other side right now because it's Team Kojic's turn. Um, I'm going to say somewhere between, keep your notifications set. It's probably going to be around 820, 825. I won't be on long, but pop back on with me so that you can hear that information and ask me any questions that I may or may not be able to answer, but I'll do my best to at that time. I love y'all so much. Thank you for being on Markup Monday. Kid Pack will drop on tomorrow. And I am your lesson reviewer for this week. And it'll be an early drop because I'm traveling this week. So just know that and I'll see y'all soon. Have a good next hour. See you shortly.